Krell sigma algebra. And uh, P of G will be the measures on G, probability measures. And I'm considering convolution. So take a continuous function f and a couple measures, and uh, the integral is their convolution with f. And uh, for random walk on group, we're interested in the behavior of uh, repeated convolution of mu and usually tested in one of a number of function spaces. So either L infinity functions or Lipschitz functions or Sobolev spaces. Or um, sometimes in the case, uh, especially in additive combinatorics, um, it's the support of the measure that's usually considered. And, uh, and then I'm interested in quantitative statements, so rates of convergence, distance to uniformity, uh, limit theorems, that type of question. I'll just give a classical example. So uh, there's an old model of riffle shuffling cards, which is you take a deck of n cards and you uh, split the cards at some point into two piles. So according to the binomial distribution on the size of the piles, and then you interleave the cards from the first pile with the second pile, uh, just sort of uniform over ways of interleaving them. And that's, uh, so if I haven't made a mistake, that's the Gilbert Shannon Reads model. And uh, so this is one of the first models of random walk in a group that was studied. And it was shown by Aldous and then Aldous and Diaconis that, uh, that this probability measure mixes in uh, three halves log, two, log base two of n steps. Uh, uh, f with. So, so it's important that it's a common phenomenon in random walk in the group that it takes some period of time for the, uh, for the measure to become close to you. For, there's some long period of time before which the measure is uniform, and then it transitions to uniform in a short period of time. So the O of 1 is the period of time in which it transitions to uniform. And, uh, and the log n is the length of time that you wait before that happens. So that's called the kind of cutoff phenomenon when it occurs. All right, so here's some motivation for random walk on a group. Uh, it's quite common in uh, applied mathematics for people to use Markov chains. And um, they can be difficult to analyze, and we don't know a lot about them. But uh, for, in some cases, uh, but in, uh, in the case of random walking group, you have uh, a bunch of analytical and algebraic tools at your disposal to study the Markov chain that results. So, so sometimes you can, you can uh, give heuristics about other chains in that way. Uh, they're used in computational group theory software and the algorithms. Um, you can form the Cayley graph of the group. So if you have a measure support on a generating set, and you, you take uh, the vertices of the graph to be the elements of the group, and then connect form edges by group elements connected by something in the generating set, that's the Cayley graph. And uh, if you know things about the generating measure, for instance, a spectral gap, then you can show that that uh, Cayley graph is an expander graph. So that was uh, sort of applications that were pioneered in number theory by Borgan and Gambert and Sarnak. So it's uh, relatively, well, it's a developing area of research. Um, we tend to be interested in, uh, um, in uh, unipotent flows on homoge homogeneous spaces and groups. And uh, sometimes tools from random walk can be useful in that case. Or sometimes, quite often, they give a simplified picture of what's going on. And then maybe the most obvious motivation is that uh, the classical theorems of probability take place on abelian groups. And so studying uh, repeated convolution on non-abelian groups is an interesting generalization. So there, there tend to be limit and central limit theorems and uh, simple random walk analogs. So I'll just describe one recent theorem of mine. So. Um, so I uh, consider the m by m upper triangular matrices with integer coefficients. And uh, for this question, I'll just consider the upper right corner entry, so the, the top right. And then uh, I'll consider measures supported on, so I take uh, a diagonal matrix, and I put a 1 at some place above the diagonal, and or 1 or minus 1 at some place above the diagonal. And uh, my measure mu sub n will be uh, the uniform measure on the set of all those matrices. So I have a, a very recent theorem, joint work with Percy Diaconis at Stanford. It's uh, so recent that it's not in print yet, but it will be ho soon, hopefully. So, uh, so I consider the walk that I just described. 
and uh, and I quotient the top right corner entry by a prime p, a large prime p, and I let p go to infinity, and uh, and I consider the walk after constant times p to the two over m minus one steps, and then I measure uniformity of that coordinate in the L1 norm, and uh, and we can show that that decays exponentially in the constant. So so we say that the walk mixes in time p to the 2 over m minus 1. And uh, I only gave an upper bound here, but there are, you could give a, a corresponding lower bound as well. So, um, and uh, so I, I just described this for a specific me measure on the upper triangular matrices, but our, our method of proof works for general measures too. And, uh, and we can also prove a local limit theorem, which is sort of still getting ironed out, but the 3 by 3 cases has been worked out completely. And so, for instance, uh, on the upper triangular matrices, there's a, just like the Gaussian measure on Rn, there's a, there, there's a notion of Gaussian measures on upper triangular matrices. And uh, for this walk, you can show that, so what I mean by a local limit theorem is that I, I pick a single integer entry in the upper triangular matrices, and, uh, and the repeated convolution is close to the, to the Gaussian measure with a quantitative error term. So this is, this is the type of theorem that I'm thinking about proving. Uh, Okay. So I'll just give a, a few ideas in how the proof goes, just so you have a, a feel for types of ideas that go into this field, although this is just a subset of them. So I take a typical word in my random walk. So you should think of W1 through WMK as generators uh, from the support of the measure. And I take a typical word like that. And then I, uh, I cut it into pieces, so w1 through wk, wk plus 1 through w2k, and so on. And uh, on each of those pieces, I, uh, I uh, apply a permutation group action, so I rearrange the order. And it turns out that if I do this appropriately, uh, I can generate, I can show that just that single word, once it was rearranged, the measure of the central coordinate, or the, the central coordinate value changes. And by choosing my blocks in my permutation, permutation groups appropriately, uh, I can show that that measure is smooth at different scales. So, so you typically think that a central limit theorem is, is smooth at, say, uh, at the size of the variant, or at the size of the standard deviation. And in this case, I want to prove a local limit theorem, so I have to say that it's smoother at smaller scales than that. And uh, so that's what's going on. And uh, so there's an interesting feature of this random walk, which is that uh, when you perform this group action for uh, n is 2, 3, and 4, the, uh, the separate factors in the permutation act uh, independently. Uh, but once n is bigger than or equal to 5, the, uh, when you look at the central coordinate, the, uh, they're dependent. So you have a non-locality going on in the group action, even though the, the, they act separately. And so if you look at the characteristic function, it no longer factors as a product. But uh, if you apply the Gower's Cauchy Schwartz trick, if you know what that is. Uh, it involves uh, uh, a large number of Cauchy Schwartz. Uh, if you apply that appropriately, you can actually restore the independence. So that's a sort of an inter interesting feature of, of this walk. And it's, um, it's connected to the fact that it's on a nilpotent group. And uh, okay, and then so, so that those are, so, so the proof itself uh, the theorem I stated is relatively easy, but if you want to give somewhat stronger bounds, then things like concertation of measure or martingale inequalities are useful. Okay, so this is all right. So this is a uh, somewhat different direction, but I just want to give you a feel for other things that are going on in this field. It's a pretty active area of research right now. So just a couple of years ago, Peter Varju uh, gave a local limit theorem for random walk on the group of isometries of Rn. Uh, so the limit theorem is in the action space. So, but, but in any case, uh, it has applications to self self similar measures, which is uh, it's a generalization of Bernoulli convolutions, which is power series with uh, Bernou uh, with plus minus one coefficients. And uh, uh, I think that's right. And uh, and then there was a, a a pretty major breakthrough by Helfgott, Serres, and Zook who showed that if you pick random elements in this metric group for almost all choices, uh, the random walk mixes in time O of n cubed log n to some power. So that was a pretty dramatic improvement over what was known before. And then uh, one other recent paper that I like is uh, 
the cat's random walk is a model for um, you have n particles and you at each step you pick two of them and choose a random rotation in the plane that they determine so you think of these particles have, as having some velocity and you, you choose the plane uh, that contains their velocities and you pick a random angle and you rotate in that angle you rotate the two vectors in that angle and then you want to know how long it takes for those vectors to become uniform and they showed that the vectors themselves become uniform in time and log n so there are a lot of techniques that go into these uh, spectral techniques, uh, coupling, combinatorial arguments, comparison with uh, other Markov chains. And uh, I'll just mention a handful of open problems. So the classical and local limit theorems and Lie groups tend to make restrictions on the measure that's the generating measure, either that it be continuous with respect to Haar measure or uh, have support generating a dense subgroup. And for instance, um, I forgot to mention it, but the local limit theorem that Percy and I have uh, refines a, a theorem of, of Broyard, who had proved a local th limit theorem on uh, upper triangular matrices over R, where the support generated was dense in the upper triangular matrices, matrices over R. So now we have a theorem over the integers. And uh, that's sort of a typical situation that the field is in. Where the, uh, for discrete groups, it may not, uh, the local limit theorems may not be known. Um, uh, second problem. Uh, so, the uh, in the situation where the measure on your group is conjugation invariant, the theory tends to be somewhat similar to the abelian case. It actually just depends on the character theory of the group, or at least on the spectral side, it only depends on the character theory of the group. And so, um, so we tend to know. In some cases, we know relatively sharp, relatively sharp convergence results. Uh, but it would be nice to know uh, similar results when the generating measure is less symmetric. So the cat's walk is, is one case that I have in mind. And then um, last example, so uh, a number of years back now, but uh, Green and Tao have a quantitative equidistribution result, uh, no manifolds, and we'd like to know corresponding results for unipotent flows on other homogeneous spaces. So that's not exactly in a walk in the group, but it's sort of tangentially related. That's something else I'm interested in. Okay.